So talk a little bit how how you got into this role. All right. So um, I well, it's a little while ago now, but I auditioned for this um, for Deb uh, first time before I think any of the roles were really cast, um, and I got the script before in a few scenes and. And I will tell you that as soon as I read this, the scenes that we were doing, it was just, I think it was two or three scenes with Sam and Riley. And I just loved it from, from the beginning because it's such a, I mean, Devereaux is obviously such a brilliant writer, I think, and director. Um, but it just came off the page in, in such a sharp and, and strange and, and specifically humorous way to me, especially the characters the two characters and, and their relationship in this kind of bickering way. And so, so that spoke to me really, um, really early in, in, in just reading those two things. So I was so, I was so excited when, when I finally got that role. And then after I got cast, uh, I met Sawyer for the first time and in rehearsal and then Barbara and Steven. And I mean, it's such a, it's such an amazing project. And, and Deb is such a, so brilliant. So I was really excited. I um, I feel like everything came together pretty quickly, and the chemistry between me and Sawyer, but also Barbara and and, and Stephen was both of the first reading. Everything just felt really great from the beginning. Even the first reading, everyone was just laughing because the scenes are and the characters are some, somewhat absurd and, and bizarre at, at points, you know. Um, so, yeah, I just knew from, from that point that it was going to be such a fun ride and very, very excited to get to work on this film with all of them and with Deb. Um, so, yeah, and Riley is, is uh, such a, such a interesting and, and specific character in the sense that she's such a controlling, um, she tries, she tries. I feel like she's very much a Virgo, which I am as well, so there's, there's certain aspects that we are similar. Um, she, in a sense that she desperately tries to, to control her relationship and control Sam into fixing it. You know, if, if I can't, if, if the relationship is bad, I'm going to try to fix everything. So she's a fixer and she's a doer and she's driven and still yet to never never fully stand up towards Sam and make her own decisions, but she tried. And, and so that also spoke to me, her role in being the person in the relationship that sort of wears the pants, uh, or at least tries to, um, because Sam is such a dreamy, kind of naive and di- distraught character in a sense. So yeah, there's a lot of things that, but yeah, definitely straight from the beginning was was very excited to be on board. So let's talk a little bit about that relationship. Uh, your the relationship between Riley and Sam is is kind of what gets you into this situation here. Um, so what was right. it? What was it like? You know, kind of building that. You know, the audience just kind of gets a, a clip in time of of these characters. But uh, I guess you and Sawyer kind of had to put, maybe put in a little backstory to them to kind of get that relationship together. Um, so how was it getting getting that relationship across while you know something strange was about to happen? I think that it was also very clear from from the beginning what Deb uh, what Deborah what he wanted for these characters, and he gave us a pretty solid backstory, and um, and also we were free to create our own. Um, our, our own relationship and, and work on it once we, you know, we were in, doing a reading of it and then after and then once on set, I felt like we had it pretty quickly. Because um, it's like you say, right, we, we just get a glimpse from from this little part, but if, if they weren't bickering and not getting along and, and sort of isolating each other, isolating from each other all the time, they, they potentially would have made a smarter choice <laughs> than to stay at the house. Um, or maybe even, you know, even get a, um, get to that, that point in the kitchen. Um, so, I think, I think again, it was, it was Deb's vision and his directing and sort of us getting to play 
play with it and, and having the chemistry between me and Sora being kind of natural and already there. Um, and I think as we spent so much time together that we also kind of built up this, this, this humor between us and this, this uh, chemistry and, and uh, the while they were on set, this kind of quick-paced bickering um, kept building pretty quickly. And it, it, it wasn't that... It didn't feel that hard. It sounds it sounds easy to say that, but it really wasn't that hard. I feel like we both fit the roles really well and did our work before we came to set. So the relationship kind of just kept, came off the page. And, and then that was, like I said, great with directing and he knew what he wanted, vision of, of what the, the relationship and the scenes, where they were going. But at the same time, he also let us have some freedom. So... You know, a lot of the scenes are fairly long, so we would just kind of play through it. And then um, there's a lot of reactions and and little moments between Riley and Sam, but also um, a Karen, or Barbara plays, who is just such an odd character that, you know, there are so many moments of just, like, laughter. <laughs> at one point, um... At one point, when uh, in the scene when we enter the house and Karen invites us in, um, there was she has to, you know this funny moment where she just sits on the couch and keeps repeating basically the same thing over and over and just stares at Sam uh, or Sawyer. <laughs> and we had a moment where we just like couldn't keep it together anymore because she was so funny. So uh, it was hard at that point because the characters are all so quirky in their own way that. That um, yeah, it became a, it became a challenge sometimes to keep it together. But I think also the fact that he had so much fun and it felt relaxed, and, and you know, trusting your director, knowing that he he knows what he wants and he can feel free to play, and the fact that me and Sawyer worked so well off each other, and and the kind of bickering humor just was easy um, to achieve, um, made everything so much. Uh, so much easier than, or so so easy. Such a great cast and um, such brilliant actors just makes everything everything easier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can kind of just enjoy it and stay in character. Yeah, I was going to ask, how, you, you kind of answered it already though, but how quickly the cast kind of got together and, and uh, made it seem so easy, especially, um, you know, with, with such a you know, strange environment there, and you know, and where you have Barbara, who's, you know, she's playing one way, but she's kind of hiding some secrets there, and then, as you say, it seems like you guys kind of roll through it, and it's all kind of creepy, but then, you know, he calls cut, and then you guys are probably there just laughing and having fun. Yeah, I mean, that definitely happened a lot of times. There were, I mean, like, I said, even in the reading, but even more on set, there was moments where it, like, couldn't keep it together, because it was there's so many, I mean, like, you see this in the film, but there's so many, like, awkward, lingering moments where either Karen or Barbara is waiting for someone to respond, or Riley or Sam, or Riley. I mean, she's so many times just, like, staring, waiting for someone to say something. And the fact that, you know, we were in, in we were just allowed to, like, stay in that scene. And, and the movie, but also the scenes are long, and they're, they're slow, a lot of them, which I really personally like, but it also allows these these juicy, awkward moments to just hang in the air, and all of our characters can can react in the way that they would do, and, and it, I, I, did, I think it just creates a really fun and awkward tension that, that you know, I'm hoping that people see come across the screen, but we definitely felt it, and so fun, but really weird, you know, Weird stats and seeing being on the pole was really, really cold at times <laughs> and really uh, claustrophobic. I don't, I don't like wearing masks or being in small spaces. Which you know, it's funny that we we didn't know that 2020 was coming around the corner and we would wear masks every day. <laughs> um, but <laughs> definitely got my practice there. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I naturally got really. I got really stressed, which, you know, fed into the, the fear of the, of the scene, obviously. Um, but also the, the basement. The basement was also really pretty nasty already, so that was a little scary. 
So you, um, so you would say that yeah, but, that those were were your more challenging scenes. I think I think the most challenging one. I mean, it, you know, it's in terms of what 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 we call challenge challenging. Because if it was like hard in a negative way, or not negative, but I would say the hardest was being on that pole when it was really cold. Because we we shot the first half of the shoot in daytime, and then we switched to nighttime. Um, or night shoot, and as we switched, it went from being really hot to really cold. Um, so those 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 um, shoot days that we were on the pole were freezing, <laughs> and and that I mean it was pretty challenging because it was a long time we sat there, and you know once we were on that pole, we didn't get off because I had literally you know we were sort of bound to that pole. Um, so, yeah, the cold was definitely, definitely a challenge. And, and I remember one point when I was, uh, when Booney, the character Booney takes Riley down to run away with her in, in, in the end of the cold sequence. Um, and I was, I was so cold that I could barely help, but like I could barely move. So I was like, oh no, I'm going to fall on the ground in my face. <laughs> it, was, it was hard to get down on that hole. But, you know, it, it, there wasn't really that much else balancing um, scenarios or situations. It was a really fun set to be on. Um, I even celebrated my birthday in that cellar. <laughs> got cake and everything. <laughs> I, I told them that birthdays were really important for me, so they made a whole cake that said happy birthday Molly, and then they surprised me, and I was like, hmm, I wonder what that could be. Um, it was really fun. So, wonderful set. It's so talented crew, and, and everything so I was, I was so sad to leave everyone at the end and, and so so where was this shot was it really out on like kind of a farm or was it just a set or no we were out in New England so I mean I, I couldn't really tell you what the exact location was because we drove uh, I think about six hours from New York so we were in, I think either I think Massachusetts Geography in the U.S. isn't my first time, <laughs> but I, I we were we were on a farm, so but, yeah, the it was... barn where the whole dream sequence happens was an actual barn, and then next to it was a house where where we were not staying. Or we didn't stay there, but we kind of spent some time while while, while shooting, and and then the house that they live in was was an actual little house that was was really creepy and old. <laughs> but, you know, like, we had all that. It was, it was such a great set, and the set design was, was great and beautiful, so it kind of creeped, creeped, creeped us out naturally. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna ask if it was dark and scary out there, especially, like, when you guys were in the, in the tent, it looked like, uh, it was pitch black out there besides for the car that kept comes up. Yeah, it kind of was. It was pretty dark. And it was it was just on a, on a you know on a on a piece of land in the middle of the forest. Um, I mean, not super far off from, from houses around, but it was pretty dark. So you know, it, it, I mean, it definitely helps when you're shooting a scene like that to to just be inside a tent and then outside. You know, you, you can't really see that much else. And and uh, the car approaching. It was really funny with with the car that that um, you would, <laughs> or Steven is driving, because I could, it, I think they kept it afterwards, but it was, it was in the actual, in the actual film, because I couldn't see anything when I looked out, because the, the, um, the lights from the car were so bright, so it was sort of like the first time I opened, when we did the scene the first time, I opened the tent, and I tried to look outside, and I was like, damn, that is so bright, so I kind of like, you know, my face is so, like, scrunched up in the film, but it was so real because I barely could see, I and mean, I couldn't see his face. I just saw these, like, massive lights. So I, I feel like that also really worked for the film and, and wasn't thinking that I, could, that I was blinded by the, by the car lights. <laughs> <laughs> that just played into the thing and kind of in a comedic way. Yeah, no, no. I, I'm sure everybody understood you. You're looking into those lights. That that's tough. It's tough enough when you're just driving really. Right, right. <laughs> so you you mentioned you mentioned a, a few minutes ago about the scenes being kind of long and paced out, and 
And um, I, I was just kind of thinking about the scenes. And I was thinking maybe one of the reasons it was done, and, and I don't know if, if it was something talked about before or just something that from a director's um, standpoint they were doing, but it seemed like the music and the sound played a very um, important role, more important role, you know, than, than maybe some of the other movies. It just seemed like as the movie went on, there was always this music and the change of the sounds and so forth. Was that something discussed with you guys before or, or that was just from a production standpoint? No, I think, I think that Deb was, like I said, I feel like he had his vision uh, before. We had not heard the music, but he definitely had talked to us about taking our time and, you know, while we rehearsed it, letting the you know, the moments be drawn out and hanging and, you know, all the tension hanging there. And so that was something that, that, that he had talked about and we felt when, when working with him. So I think we all just really liked that and, and understood that that was, that was sort of the feel of the movie. Um, and then uh, it definitely played from the suspension, but but in a, in a different way than, uh, you know, like not suspension, like in a, in, like you're saying, like maybe not like in a slasher movie where it's like a little bit of suspension that something happens and then suspension. Like this is a really long build and I think that that really creates the kind of, like it makes it the film that it, that it became when it was done. And, and I agree with you. I think that the sound is beautiful and I think it really, it really helps to, to build the tension and the, kind of the quirkiness um, and the, the, the bizarre feeling and the soundtrack is so, so beautiful and, and the composer was actually out visiting us in set so I'm sure he he got a feeling of what the sense was and, and that he and Deb had came up with, with the type of, of soundtrack that they were going for but I, yeah, I really enjoyed the soundtrack actually. Um, didn't know exactly how it was going to be edited and and how the sound was going to be added afterwards, but I, it was a great surprise. Um, we also did some of the voiceover. I actually speak in Swedish. I don't know if anyone knows that, except Swedish people, but there's sort of a whisper that goes, um, that is underlying. You can, you can hear it very quietly, but I whisper all of these, like I think it was a poem in, um, in Swedish. And so all of those little things and the whispers and the, Ha, ha, ha. I don't know. <laughs> you know, all of that, those sounds just makes it even more creepy. <laughs> so yeah, I think they did a great job with all of that. So so that that was you. That was interesting. I did catch a a, a voice at at times, but I it was it was yeah. You couldn't understand. I mean, I guess if you understood Swedish, you'd understand. But I guess you know from my standpoint, I don't. So I didn't know what it was saying. No, I actually, I, yeah, I because I, I didn't, I, you know, I I don't play Swedish in the film. Um, but that just kind of have, came up to me after and said, you know, let's do some voiceover when we were doing ADR for the film. And I was like, sure, I'll, I'll mumble. I'll mumble some Swedish because it sounds scary, you know, it's, and it makes it interesting. And it's, you know, another element of, of sound and that might, you know, confuse or heighten, heighten the tension and the suspension of the film. So I think it really worked. Oh, I, think I, think so. I mean, that's brilliant. You've got such specific and, and strange but but really sharp sense of, of sense of writing and directing I think. That's a very interesting uh, tidbit there and uh, thanks thanks for sharing that and um, thank you for your time of course and uh, and I enjoyed the film. Yeah, thank you.